Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to simulate a part moving along a conveyor belt. Okay, so initially what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to speed through this, is to add a robot. I've picked one that's sufficiently large, I hope. And I'm then going to add the conveyor to my layout model. And all of this has been covered previously, so I'm not going to spend any time on it. The one thing you want to make sure you're doing when you do this, however, is to make sure that the conveyor position is such that the robot is actually able to reach all points on the conveyor. If you don't ensure that you've reached all the points, you will run into problems in that you can't get the part to correctly, cleanly move. So you want to make sure you get that right or it will cause you a certain amount of trouble and one last final tweak on the position and we should be good to go now that we can reach all points the next thing you will need to do is go into your robot and add a hand the hand will allow you to display your your part your box whatever it is you have that you're trying to simulate motion wise and once again, this has been covered previously, so I'm not really going to go into this in great detail. But go in, edit the hand. I'm going to create a box initially here to simulate my part that's being moved. And I've changed the color of the box real fast to make it easier to see. And then it's just a matter of finding out where you want the box or the part to physically be. I've decided the box is a little bit small, so we're going to make it a little bit bigger here. And now we can see our box on our conveyor. I need to get the height correct. You will want to zoom in fairly tightly to get this right. And you're probably going to have to manually adjust this. You won't be able to use the sliders. And once you're happy with the starting location of your box, you can go in and create a program. And this is going to be the path that the box will be following. I, uh, when I created my program or my, uh, my robot model, I apparently selected Melfa uh, Basic 5, not 4, so that's fine. I don't need line numbers is all the only difference. Um, I, did, I do have a typo here in my program. We'll see here in a minute. I'll fix that. But create the points. This is, once again, no different than what you're doing normally when you create a robot program. And so there's my finish point. I'm happy with that. I try to save it. It says there's an error. I didn't catch that there was an MV2 instead of MVS on line 2. I also forgot to put the end in there. And now that my program is happy, you can see it run indefinitely. So I'm going to add the halt. Add that. It now runs correctly. And now I can start going in and tweaking my model. The first thing I need to do is go in and turn off the robot. That makes the robot disappear, but you'll notice the hand is still visible. So the box is visible, and this is how we fake the part moving on the conveyor without really having the ability to do that in a traditional sense. As you can see, it's now moving, and it looks like there's a box very rapidly moving around my conveyor. Test it a couple times, make sure I'm happy. And if I go in and turn off the display tool coordinate, the coordinate system for the box dis disappears, makes it look, look a little nicer. And if I go up to the 3D monitor and turn off display coordinate system, I now lose all of those coordinate uh, references and I have a clean looking interface. So at this point, I now have my box moving around. I can then go into the hand definition, change the tool number from a dash to a one. And what this will actually allow me to do, you'll notice that the box disappeared. I can now through my program, I need to save that, write it. But now in my program, I can, t I can select the tool and turn that box vis visibly on and off as I need to. And so if I come in here and add some lines to my code, tool and space one, then it will display the tool at that point, And then I can do tool space zero 
or two or, or something that's not been defined, and it will turn that box back off. So we're going to run it, and you'll notice it turns off, and I run it again, and it turns on before I move over. So really what I want to do here is set that to zero in this case. And then after I move to the first point, then turn on the box. Turn on tool one. And now when I run the program, you will see the box appear, move, and then disappear. And so this is a little bit closer to what we would actually expect to see in real life. And it allows our simulation to look a lot more realistic is moving a little faster than I would like, so I'm going to go in and add a speed command, and this will allow me to define how fast the robot moves, and I'm guessing at 50 millimeters a second, and this will be a trial and error to see what you like. That's awfully slow, so we're going to stop it and change that speed, and we're going to just bump it up until we're happy with how fast it moves across the conveyors. And so I can come in and tweak my program a little bit more. I'm going to move that turning off of the tool so that the box does not disappear when the program is done running. Um, it'll just look a little nicer. But depending on how you're configuring your setup, you may or may not want to do the same thing. And so the final thing that I'm going to tweak on my demo here is instead of using the box, I'm actually going to add the casting for the sealant project so that you can see the actual part moving around the conveyor instead of just a random box. Now, if you're doing the palletizing, you may want the boxes coming in so you can show the boxes being lifted off the conveyor. You don't have to have it overly complicated, get it working first, but as you get things done, you will want to make this as polished as possible. And a part of that will be changing things so that it looks as realistic as you can get away with. And so here I am changing the box over from a, a box to the 3D model and getting it positioned on the gripper so that it's at the right location, right orientation, and making sure that I'm happy with it. And once I've saved that, I can then see my part instead of just a temporary box as a placeholder. And if we turn on the, monitor, the program monitor, we can watch as the program is not only moving the box around, but we can see it turn on and off the tools to give us the look we're trying to go for. Hopefully that's made sense. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.